Well, welcome everyone to a special called meeting, August the 10th, 2021. At this time, I'll, I'll ask him to, um, I shouldn't say to, here we are. Our paralegal to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Here. Commissioner Mark Castling. Here. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Larry Maglinger. Here. Commissioner Bob Glenn. Here. Okay, at this time I'll ask you to please stand and uh, we'll have the invocation and the pledge to the flag. Okay, uh, item four on the agenda is a second reading, which will be a roll call vote. So at this time, Kim, would you please read the Sorry. stuff? Ordinance 10, 2021, an ordinance closing alley rights of way located behind 714 Sycamore Street and 1013 West 8th Street and between 1010 and 1014 West 7th Streets in the city of Owensboro, Kentucky. Habitat for Humanity of Owensboro Davis County Inc. Public, publicly read for approval on second reading this 10th day of August 2021. Thank you. City Manager, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, Mayor, just briefly, this is second reading closing an alley off of West 7th Street. <coughs> The alley closure was requested by Habitat for Humanity, who owns one of the properties contiguous to the alley. Both two contiguous property owners have provided a signed consent for the The alley to be closed is called a paper alley, and it is not paved, it just exists on paper or on a plat is off of West 7th, but it does not connect to any other street, so it serves no purpose from a transportation network perspective. If the closure is approved, the alley property will revert to the contiguous property owners. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. I have a roll call vote, please. Yes. Commissioner Mark Castling? Yes. Uh, Tom Watson? Here. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Commissioner Bob Glenn. Yes. Um, Mike, well, I think, aren't they? We don't have to yell anymore, do we? Okay, item five, municipal order. Uh, item 5A, please. Municipal order 31 2021. A municipal order repealing municipal order 3 2021. Part and authorizing and directing to execute a memorandum of agreement. 
between the City of Owensboro and Big Rivers Electric Corporation, by which the corporation shall relocate its headquarters to the City of Owensboro in exchange for financial incentives from the city, including rebates of the price of the following real estate and a payment for providing parking for employees, gas transmission LLC, and further declaring 7710 West 2nd Street and 711 West 3rd Street as surplus property, and further authorizing the mayor to execute deeds transferring those properties to Big River Corporation in agreement with KRS 82.083. Introduced and publicly read for approval this day of August 2021. Thank you, Kim. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Late last year, it was announced that Big Rivers Electric will move its headquarters to downtown Owensboro. The project involves over 100 jobs with a sizable payroll. Big Rivers will locate on 2nd Street on the block immediately west of Boardwalk Pipeline Partners. It's the site where the Royce Restaurant was located for many years. The city owned a portion of the block, and about two years ago, we acquired the other properties on the block we didn't already own. We assembled the block with the intent to locate a headquarters project on the site, so our plan worked well. In February, the commission approved a municipal order with the incentive agreement for the project. We considered the MO in February so the company could begin design of their facility. The incentives in today's revised as agreement do not change. They are the same as what was approved in February. Some of the boardwalk employees park on the Big River site, and the amendment agreement today is to provide alternate park parking <coughs> for these employees. We knew we would have to accommodate the parking change, so this amendment was expected, and again, it was not included in the reaction because we were not sure at the time where the parking would reload to and that lost my note sorry uh, that uh, this was so this is an expected change to the agreement it does not change the financial terms that were already approved thank you um, up here. It's a long, arduous process that are done. So, in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Municipal Order 2021. Municipal Order Repeating Municipal Order 7 2019. Authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a memorandum of agreement between the city of Owensboro and providing a $4,600,000 I'm sorry, four million six hundred thousand dollar financial incentive opening of downtown hotel and parking structure and residential incentive via all taxing revenue that Riverfront Rio LLC would otherwise be entitled to recoup for its costs. Introduced and publicly read for approval this 10th day of August 2020. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Bob Boyd. Do you have any comments? I do, Mayor. In, in April of 2019, the Board of Commissioners approved the agreement for the Brio project, which is a downtown across the convention center. 
This municipal order makes several changes to the project total amount of the incentive of $4.6 million. Changes to the original agreement include the following. The original agreement required 120 hotels, but the new agreement changes that brand. The original agreement on the same block as the hotel. The revised agreement requires 180 rents of the original block and to two other locations. By reducing the scope of the project and allowing the residential units to be dispersed to multiple locations, the revised project won't be as massive overall and as a result, it better fits the scale of our downtown. Earlier, the total amount of the incentive is unchanged. The green incentive are allocated to the hotel and to the residential units. Both components have firm timelines with penalties if these time met. These penalties protect the city and were not included in the original agreement. While the agreement overall changes are relatively minor in scope and reason the economic changes in the past two years. The revised agreement with the sizable economic development impact for downtown center while better protect interest of the city and our taxpayers if you would call on uh, Ms. Moniger to just tell us how important having that third hotel is to the contribution for the TIF please get that red hear me sorry about that um, yes mayor I'd be happy as uh, we discussed in a previous um, items of concern should that hotel uh, and constructed in the downtown TIF area uh, not meeting our capital investment requirements uh, potentially uh, having to date which uh, would probably uh, make them uh, completion basis this addresses all our potential previous concerns and plan in the TIF area will allow us to have those larger events. Has uh, communicated that they're losing out on. Importantly, from it, uh, the biggest benefit would be uh, saving the fund about a half a million dollars a year. And is having to subsidize uh, TIF eligible debt service. So um, all projections indicate enough sales revenue that we'll get back from the state to alleviate the general fund, I mean, to continue making that subsidy. Great. And the extra downtown, so if a convention center can participate, that's the big key to the whole thing. Yes, it is. It is, Mayor. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Item 5C, Mr. Thank you. Municipal Order 1. A municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a real estate purchase agreement for the acquisition of property located. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. City Manager, Energy comments. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, my, my comments at this time will address both this, this municipal order and the next item. Headquarters will be constructed. That was an intentional strategy to have it available for an economic development. Project. The strategy work as servers will be a welcome addition to down to come. However, now that that property will be occupied, it's in the city's long term interest to another similar site. Municipal orders 33 and 34 provide for the purchase of 112 Veterans Boulevard. The city will own the entire frontage along Veterans Boulevard between Davis and Allen. Riverside previously, our intent 
assembling the Veterans Boulevard property is for it to be the location of a future economic path property purchases, create a prime site with views of the river and some others. Uh, and Mayor Commissioner, you can see on your screens now uh, the, the block in question or the property. One twenty and one twenty four. Uh, so the text will authorize the purchase of one twenty and one twelve there on the left and in the middle. Thank you. One hundred and one twelve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, one hundred and one twelve. Thank you. Another precinct code firm. All right. Good job, Council. <laughs> Did we uh, attach a cost to this for the, the to acquire? There, there is a cost. Matter. The combined cost for this million dollars. Thank you. That's it. Any other discussion? I had a question. If I can ask it of, of our city manager. Okay, so we buy this property, but currently there are occupants in those things. So do we buy it and they immediately move out, or is there a more relaxed time frame where they kind of stay in it, but we have control of yeah, the property? Yeah, uh, there is, and, and uh, Mark jump in, but I believe that they're okay. allowed to remain in there until we need it. So we wouldn't just automatically uh, remove them or, or demolish the building. I'd just soon see it stay occupied uh, until at such time we need it. Mark, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so we basically just have control over it, and when we're ready, they can stay in it until then. Okay. Correct. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Okay, any other discussion? <coughs> Mr. Maglinger. I just want to make a comment. This is great to have that whole block-long riverfront view for our future. And I appreciate everybody working on that mm -hmm. uh, to put that together. Nice place for custom video audio, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So do we need to do 5D as well? Yes, yes. Mayor, you'll need to do that separately. Okay, 5D, Ms. Signa. Municipal Order 34-2021. A municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a real estate purchase agreement for the acquisition of property located at 112 East Veterans Boulevard, introduced and publicly read for approval this 10th day of August 2021. I make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. second. We've got four now. City manager, do you have any comments? No, mayor. Okay. So I'm just being respectful to your position. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. City Manager items, 6A. Yes, today we have the following personnel appointments for your consideration. Janice Leslie, probationary full-time non-civil service appointment to bus driver with transit effective August 16th. Kelsey Ray, probationary full-time non-civil service communications marketing manager with mission effective August 16th. Steven Schroeder, probationary full-time non-civil service appointment to refugee driver with sanitation effective August 16th. Mark Perry, probationary full-time, also will serve with promotional appointment crew with the street department, effective August 15th. Timothy Young, probationary full-time, non-civil service, promotional appointment to crew leader with the stormwater department, effective August 15th. Bradley Leonard, regular full-time, non-civil service appointment to lieutenant with the fire department, effective August 2nd. Edward Smith, regular full-time, non-civil ser service appointment to captain with the fire department, effective August 2nd. Clayton Tuma, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to lieutenant with the fire department, effective August 2nd. David Veach, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to captain with the fire department, effective August 2nd. And Kelsey Stogner, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to secretary with the police department, effective August 2nd. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? So basically the top three, the first three were new hires and the rest of them are just kind of gone from probationary to full time and, and up, upgrading. Uh, essentially the top hires, the next two are recent promotions. So they're promotional pro, uh, promotions and then the bottom just finished their probationary period. Thank you. Okay, all in favor, any Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Swimming hole update. And, and while Amanda gets, this is the time where we 
close this meeting out there? No, it's, it's still one meeting that we've previously done that normally would have been on a commission meeting, and this, these next few items are what would have been on the or excuse me, the work session for today. Hello, Mayor. And share some information. We have two pools, Combest and Review, both locations. Combest pool was built in four, seven. It is an Olympic sized pool. It's about three feet to five feet deep, depending upon which area of the pool you're in. It can hold 600 swimmers. Um, that is the location. On an average, we see about 156 swimmers a day that were open there. And um, with it being 48 years old, we have had to put some significant money into that location in the year 1516 to make renovations to keep it operational. And that year, we basically replaced mechanical systems to the pool itself. We had to make significant changes to our mechanical system. And we also, at the encouragement of our insurance company, lowered the deep end of the pool from 10 feet to five and replaced the diving board with two slides. That is our city of Owensboro. Our secondary pool is Cravens. That is located on Cravens Avenue next to Cravens Elementary School. It is on city of Owensboro. I'm sorry, it's located on Board of Education property. It is 46 years old. Pool in size, it holds by capacity 200 swimmers on any given day. We average about 55 to 66 swimmers a day location. And um, we have had problems with that pool since about 20 years in to building of that location. So in 95, um, it was Tony Cecil at the time, he worked to make significant renovations to keep it operational and functional for the city. We put about $183,000 into pool in that year to make, make changes. In addition, um, we've had to make other repairs in 2016. And on an annual basis, we spend a significant amount of money keeping that location operational. So what I wanted to do today is spend a little bit of time to talk to you about the vision for the future of pools and make sure everyone on this dais is aware of the situation that we've been dealing with as a staff and previous elected officials with that location at Cravens. So since 95, we were aware we had issues and we've been working to address those in the most cost effective manner that we can as a city to keep it operational for our citizens. That's what we consider a neighborhood pool. The primary function and user group at that location is going to be people that walk, ride, or drive from the area of the community. And it also serves some day groups, um, some business organizations that bring maybe church groups and, and day camps like the Second Army to that pool. So I took this job as director in March of 2010, and I was well aware of the situation that we were dealing with uh, when I had left the city back in 06 with Cravens. So I wanted to be as proactive as possible knowing that we were going to be facing issues with Cravens in the near future. So I reached out to Jan Brown, who is the program administrator for the Kentucky Department of Public Health. That is the group that administers um, basically all the regulations for operating public pools in the state of Kentucky. I asked her to visit a once a and she did. And she came down and at that time, knowing that moving forward, we would be having issues and knowing when, when those issues were likely going to be significant, that we were gonna have compliance issues I wanted to, to get her here to make sure that we were certain we knew what compliance issues would be. So we took a proactive step in bringing her to Owensboro. The public works team and our parks team met with her property. We reviewed the drawings and the plans for that pool as well as walked the property. And she sent us following that visit a list of what we would need to do in 2011 to get to that current pool code. And at that time, she said it was about $173,000. Now we took her guidance, our public works team went back and put estimates together as well to make sure that, that we had good numbers. Um, so we knew at that time, moving forward, if we had issues, this is what we were gonna be facing. So since 2012, our public works team has done an amazing job. I cannot speak highly enough efforts they've put into um, the endless amounts we joke on that very does to make things really sometimes in our program. There are great two entities on there that, that keep us functioning. And each year, $23,000 on general maintenance of that keep functioning for our citizens. And in 2016, you'll recall that I mentioned we had to put a liner um, and gutters in to keep it operational. That expense was about 30000 And we knew at the time in 16 that we'd get issues from elected officials' attention at that time. And we all agreed upon this liner as a short-term match to keep it functional with four more seasons at that location. 
knowing that we weren't sure about the future of that pool and the future for the aquatics plan here in the St. Louis Park System, we decided to defer capital maintenance items and we allowed that 128,000 in capital maintenance at that location. So that money is sitting there in the plan. So in preparation for what might be less COVID restrictions for operation, this is to the Green River District Health Park. They are the local group that puzzles and we asked them to review the site with us on board when we ran in 2011. We had some awareness of what we had dealt with back then as well. And they provided us with a letter that stated we had four violations, two of which were sent. And to open, we were going to have to repair the pool. When we talk about repairing the pool, we we'll talk about the sort of magic fairy dust that the public has used for the many years to get us there. But now we're talking about repairs that are significant that we can't um, any longer can to just a patchwork. But now we're at the point which we are going to have to minus and code as a current code for pools in the state. And today we'll notice our list of what we will need to do Craven's pool to come out again. We did ask our public works team to put estimate together on those costs as it stands today. Stephen Franklin and his debt for me, um, and the estimate is about three hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars. So, I hate to bring a problem and not a it's not something I'm fine with. It's what I've done. I was significant enough problem to make sure the new elected officials were aware of what I know some of the more experienced elected officials that have been with us before were. Up. So, bringing you the problem today, I promise that I have recommendations and. Um, I feel it's time for us as a park a staff and for you all officials and the city manager the overall vision for the city. Do we want to stay in the pool business if we stay in the pool business and operate at both locations? Do we want to put additional money into Craven's Pool to continue operating and is that the right back to that area of the community? Um, or does it make sense to something else? Something like many other cities in the state of Kentucky with a more family-based aquatics facility. So it's my intent to look at what other communities in the state of Kentucky are doing, speak to my Friends that work in the business in the parks and state of Kentucky, their family style quadrants bill or are costing for as is at Craven um, for repairing, yes. looking at how safe the spray park might be. I'm discussing does make Craven and the Logic Center. So I'm going to be gathering public input, um, looking at what our options might be, and then considering information from myself and my team would be to City Manager Nate Pagan and then onwards to you. Got that information. That question. We entertain any questions. Yes, Rogers, uh, obviously, we don't. Own Is that correct? Our legal team has told me we do not own the property. Okay, that so that's owned by the Orangeboro Public School System. To Mark, do you want to address that? Uh, the city conveyed its interest out in the 1990s by deed to Orangeboro Public Schools. So that's where it stands right now. I know we got into a big conflict when we, when this was, I guess I was here then, I, yeah. I think, and uh, so one of the commissioners rallied the troops and, you know, and said, you know, we can't shut it down because that's the only place that area of folks can go to swim. So uh, we approached the public school system, I think, and asked if they wanted to participate and they told me they couldn't participate because it was a recreational facility. So I'm thinking basketball, football, baseball, I'm not real sure how the swimming hole got shoved out of into the recreational facility. Um, what is your average number of folks that participate at the pool? Do you ever keep that track? Yeah. The last year that we were open, um, the last full season we were open was 2019. Of course, this season and last season we were not open. And we averaged 55 a day at um, Cravens and at Combest, 150 a day. Okay. Now, that is just public use swim lessons. It doesn't count public uh, and private rentals. And we have about 600. Um, in attendance over the course of a season at our private rentals okay. at Craven's Pool. And from reading about these in-ground pools, a lot of people in the Commonwealth are trying to do away with them as for multiple reasons, insurance, yada, yada, yada. Is that correct? I, I would say yes. I think a large part is the operational expense. When you look at the weeks that one of these locations typically is open, Open in the state of Kentucky in our weather region, um, they they typically are a loss leader um, in a community. There 
are many, many uh, pools in, in multiple cities in the state of Kentucky, um, but they are not popping up new like other types of recreational facilities. Yeah, most parks are lost leader anyway, I guess. Uh, so the, the uh, do you have an idea what the, a spray park costs and maintenance and that stuff? Can you bring that back next time? I can. Yes, versus, sir. Versus you know the in ground pool that to right now it's at 380 to fix it to where it's supposed to be so it'd be kind of good to have some comparisons to see what we're dealing with because don't want to start a, another feud another outer loop or anything so uh, I would like to have good solid information about how we can assist that area of the community but at the same time you know be fiscally responsible for our tax dollars I would uh, appreciate that. Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner Cass. Yes. Uh, I was wondering how much is a membership to the pool? Uh, there is no, we don't do memberships at our pool. You can buy a swim card and that swim card is $30 and that'll give you 10 visits or you can pay the $3 a day to get in. It's very affordable. And it is very affordable. Uh, I was thinking as far as raising pr prices, but, uh, you know, really with the, with the overall cost of the pools and the maintenance, it's probably just not going to be feasible even if you did that, would it? Um, I, don't, I don't think unless we raise the price to closer to 8 or $9 which is going to turn clients away so it's always when it comes to pricing in the park system we always look at where is that magic number that draws people in but doesn't send them away based upon that price being too high right okay I think we've got a couple of golf courses like that as well don't we yeah. <laughs> Mr. Commissioner Sanford thanks mayor uh, Amanda uh, do you have any any idea just off the hip of like what a new aquatic center would or a pool are we talking a million are we talking like three million four million I mean I think it, it, it could be astronomical just depending upon what I put in there mm -hmm. um, you easily no less than five million would be my estimate okay. no less if we were doing something Thing about the size of Combest, but with water features and amenities, the kind of thing that would draw someone in um, to utilize that pool on a, on a basis, um, and that's probably without property costs. Okay. I mean, the, the mayor mentioned something interesting to me is about, about combining forces, maybe with the school, with schools. I mean, would would there be any interest for them to kick in or something? You know. Uh, it's been has it ever? been talked about approached it has. Um, it's been a few years now and it'd probably be worth my time to initiate that meeting again but mm -hmm. back in I think 13 I initiated a meeting with the colleges and each of the boards of education and uh, Matt Robbins at the time was an assistant superintendent he worked with me together all the parties and we met at one of their conference rooms and said what's everyone's priorities what's everyone's need in regards to recreation and facilities mm -hmm. And we talked about aquatics a lot at that time because we really don't have too many locations for the schools to use. They're basically right. the same two locations and fighting for that prime time. And so we did discuss it at that time. And, and no one was and on board to present that to their boards yeah. as a funding cycle. Well, I look at Kentucky Wesleyan and Owensboro County in the foot and still stadium and that's a, a pretty good situation and I, I wish more people would would work work together like that to, you know a lot more done with a lot more resources and so uh, if we can relying on uh, yeah basically the city to provide mm -hmm. them tennis courts and they've taken all their tennis courts out so it's a uh, seven and cents out of every dollar tax dollars and this local government gets three or something it mm -hmm. just kind of seems uh, a little out of balance to me sometimes 
Good point. Anybody else? Mr. Glenn. Uh, so I mean, Bill's experience, I think they just built a new aquatic facility. They're just calling that on yeah, the I would news. highly look at what they're doing because you get rid of swimming pools. You know, we have some spray parks. Once you open them, it wears off. They don't get used much. Go to Kendall Perkins. Nobody's touching it. I went over and turned the water on and the kids worked and they went over and played in it when we had them over there. They're used. And the second is minority and poor kids drowned at a higher rate than those who come from middle class and white families. So if we shut down and we don't have any pools, then spray parks, that's going to make that get even bigger. Um, the question I've got is with COVID, Appreciate all the work you've done getting pool open this year, getting Tom Best open to make it. Clay Horton last week about what his recommendation is. The increased stance on where we're at right now. We were still doing increased capacities at most of our staff in and out of facilities I just want to commend your life lifeguard crew and it just reflects way on you Mark thank you I'm very proud of those young people thank you, thank you mayor okay. anybody else you off the hot seat thank you sir you're welcome Next item on the agenda is Wayfinding Signs, Leland Hancock, Assistant City Manager. And somebody else do it, right? Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Mayor. Got bad legs. <laughs> uh, this has been a fun and interesting project, and uh, it's, it's been really eye-opening. And I can tell you from just the stack I have in front of me, uh, we have no less than 40 or 50 different ways that we sign our community for various different items. Um, so the whole idea of this process was to develop a consistent way to, one, get you to Owensboro, and then one, once you get here, obviously get you to the places that you're looking for, and this may want you to take some interest into the Bluegrass Museum, the Blue Park Center, Convention Center, things like that. So uh, with a group, um, a committee basically made up of a member from Planning and Zoning, Engineering, CBB, Real Association, and Chamber of Young Professionals. And our first SWAT, as you'll see this map, uh, is about 36 different signs. You've got your primary signs that will be out uh, basically at your intersections at Highway 60 East, Highway 60 West, 54, 603, Frederick Street, and those areas that will give you some basic information. And then as you travel further into the downtown area, you'll get more information on the, the items that are in those particular areas. And then as you get into the downtown itself, there's much more uh, activity and items to draw your attention to. Uh, there are about 36 initial signs, uh, plus an additional 15 parking signs to get you to our parking locations within the downtown area, should you be for an air show or a convention center event uh, as well. Uh, one of the sites that you invest in by trying to incorporate uh, heritage or uh, uh, the the uh, 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 bridge, which is something that everybody has enjoyed the lights there. And uh, uh, some of those pieces that we will be picking out for each of the history is depending on what they're considering. As you come further, it's going to be easy for you uh, to get your signs to get your to turn down and bring up, you know, welcome to Owensboro signs like that. And these will be reminiscent of what you see there in search. One edition you'll see is fixed in three locations. So we'll have some interactive uh, live maps uh, in Louisville, Lexington, Nashville, to larger cities. So we'll have a place uh, that these will be located. So you come up for a convention center event and come out. And it'll be a and Yes. An example of that, we've got very something we have around signs. Parking is a consistent idea so that when we're going for a consistent convention center. We're going to have some additional signs on the right, more like a stone monument. This is where a uh, sign for the that we can utilize. It is for some different things. We don't. I got a couple. Those. Uh, so this was brought up in 2016, I think, will be KY project. That's correct. So it's 2021. No offense intended. I know it's a big project. So does somebody 
already approved the design or did y'all's committee just approve it? Committee has narrowed these down. This is what I wanted to present to the commission to see so these designs. Is, if we like if it's it. something the, com the commission embraces, we'll continue to move forward. If we get a thumbs down, then we'll go back to the drawing board and make some changes as well. So okay. we're happy to do that, but the committee's worked pretty hard on this uh, to get to this point. So the cost of this project? Anywhere from about 150 to $175,000 roughly. Now there will be some additional signs as you get out to the state highways and federal highways. They're regulated by the DOT rules, so they can't be as um, graphic as these. They'll be your typical brown and green that you see because they're governed by those regulations. Get a thumbs up. What kind of time frame are we looking at? I would say we would be ready to move on this uh, probably in about two to three months once all the individual wording on each sign is complete. I would give it about six months, roughly. Okay. I'm not trying to pin you down. I just, somebody's going to ask me that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's about a six month process from now until. Okay. And as we work on the state and federal signs that will be out on the bypass and the interstates, there's an application process we go through. We work with. Uh, Kevin Coyne as well, and, and we'll get the particular information that we want listed out there. We're limited to what list, how many items, and then what it looks like, obviously. Governor. Uh, Commissioner Cass. Uh, on the uh, kiosk type signs, yes, are those going to just uh, out what's uh, available or do they speak or uh, no they will not speak or print anything out our current signs are just a fixed map as you have business change and things move and things get built it'll be very easy for our um, team to, to update those maps mm -hmm. and then put that out there but it'll be more interactive as if you were looking at a Google map you can click and this will say this is Bar Louie or this is Center, and then it will lead you to that. And if you need more information, we can even put a QR code so that you can scan, and you can see the events going on there, and at all different kinds of information there. Yeah. Okay. That way, you're not updating that one sign, but you're leading you to an individual location that updates their information. Oh, isn't yes. It? Well, sure. and the schedules of upcoming events was something I was interested in, and. Mm -hmm you know, making uh, people aware of sure. when they, they look at them. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Leland, uh, some of the signs we have, people always tell me that they can't see. Did y'all like to make sure that what, what you're, I'm sure you did, that from a car that you can actually see where everything's pointing. Read it. Yeah, there are standard that they utilize We've okay. got a traffic engineer, and we've got uh, Mr. Okay. Foley as well that helps uh, provide those technical aspects. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Leland, just a yes. quick question. So in putting these signs together, committees, designing them and getting them constructed and getting approval, is there an ADA issue there, American Disabilities Act issue with any of this? And I know we spent a lot of money downtown with those curb cuts so that people who are disabled could enjoy downtown and other parts of our city. I just wonder about ADA because it's like you, that touch board you talk about, if it doesn't have an audio element and I'm blind, it's not going to do me a whole lot of good. Uh, we can explore that on the uh, interactive piece. Uh, it was one that uh, the issue hadn't come up. And on the other pieces, uh, there's MUTC codes that we follow. Uh, that ensure there are the particular heights and standards and safety regulations and those types of items. Uh, but I will explore. Okay. Thank you. Sounds sounds and looks good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Y'all want to give them a thumbs up? Thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you all. Wake up, Kevin. You're next. Okay. Item nine. Recruitment overview, Josh Bachmeyer.
resource manager. Good afternoon, mayors, mayor and commissioners. I'm Josh Bachmeyer, our manager for the city. Uh, I'd like to take a moment and just uh, a short 30 second recruitment piece that we recently produced. That was short. It was short. Find yours in the employment opportunities at owensboro.org. Thumbs up. Yeah. As you've just seen, What's Your Calling is the foundation of the city's newest recruitment campaign. We've just begun the transition from the city's previous Hometown Heroes campaign into the revamped What's Your Calling campaign. The 30, and, and we also produced a 15-second recruitment video uh, that will be shown on strategic spots at FIE for one. We have a contract with our local Malco that shows it between uh, or before every movie shown. Uh, so over the next few weeks, <clears throat> um, we'll be replacing all the hometown hero signage with similar Id images to what you see here. Uh, I would like to, while I have a second, to express my gratitude to those who uh, volunteered or were maybe voluntold uh, to participate. Uh, so from left to right, uh, Public Works Grounds crew leader Chris Wink, uh, firefighter Matt Sissel, sanitation manager Caleb Gray, bus driver Sherry Hazelwood, maintenance equipment operator Steve Bickett, police officer Ben Fleury, and telecommunicator Nathan Conway. So the rendering you see here uh, or on your screen are what Owensboro's first all-electric bus will look like when it hits the streets in or around January uh, of this, this coming January of 2022. Uh, you may notice we included de departments that are particularly difficult to recruit and staff. Uh, hopefully this campaign provides for a of recruitment efforts. Uh, West and Company were instrumental in the production of this piece. So Tanner, uh, David Grinnell, Asha Gleason, and company for their creativity and, and expertise. That's it. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I have a question. Uh, you know, we got a big old blank wall on that convention center. I mean, is, could that be of some use to put dents, calling, advertising the city? Have we ever looked into the cost of that? doing some kind of I have not that's an interesting idea Amanda and I have discussed um, kind of a rolling marquee at one of the parks locations probably Combest uh, that we kind of just briefly looked into you know where we could roll upcoming events as well as you know any recruitment com campaigns that we have going on certainly a, an interesting idea and that is a big blank wall oh, it's right. terrible <laughs> and, and if I imagine city managers doing numbers right now <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you know, that's that's a building, and it seems like a maybe bless you. Uh, it seems like a logical place to put some, some kind of nice live building right there. Just a lot could be shown on it for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do what? A lot could be shown on it for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, which I've complained about since 2005. Not to go back in history, but when we're put on hold and the CRS is we're waiting for a call. That's got to be the worst Benny Goodman clarinet music I've ever heard in my life. And I'm, I'm wondering if we couldn't advertise what we do, uh, like jobs and, and what's going on in the city, and just do a, a, you know, a message on that thing. Because how many calls do they give us? And uh, it's, it seems like that thought process. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Yeah, it's something I'll look into. I mean, somebody could cut about a that. little voicemail thing. Plug that in instead of <laughs> that other thing that's been on there. It's been on there for years, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been on there. <laughs> it's been a, 
Uh, but they're clearing it. It's all gone by now. But anyway, good job. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is item 10, the Northwest Revitalization Area in results. Abby Shelton. Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. Thank you so much for me to give you a quick update about the uh, Northwest NRSA programming as well as the results from the naming contest section of town between Walnut Street and um, the north side of it. We have several different programs that we are implementing. Landlord rental rehab, 50-50 demo, single family rehab, single family new build, first and second street corridor improvements, and to date, which these numbers are just a little bit off, um, we have gotten some more as we've gotten some more ones, we have one hundred thousand dollars committed and pretty much we have about four hundred seventy eight committed for a total of six hundred sixty eight thousand and that's just in the community catalyst grants. Of course, federal funds that we are putting towards that um, <coughs> location. Existing homeowner exterior rehab, beautification, commercial improvements. We also have home funds that we're using in that area through home buyer program, down distance, home buyer education programming. And um, we have not executed any agreements as of yet because we're still waiting for the pay from HUD on the annual end. We should have that hopefully this week or next week. But um, in the applications we have received, we have 84,000 committed in public grants and 35 estimated in private. Of course, numbers are not accurate because we don't have the projects delineated yet. So the total. Um, which is all right now is about $119,000. So all funds total in that area committed, we have 269,000 and public 35,000, private 400,000 so far committed in that area. And a couple projects, these like community uh, grants that um, are underway right now. The one on the left is uh, on um, Street. And I'll tell you when I met the developer over there, and else, I had in Tesla two that I don't even understand it doesn't agree with the so I come to the North of St. Reed to so publish the suggestions for naming, giving it a round of what is various land. There's some of the um, so animations that are which is yet to be run. So I'm going to share the number and I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to suggest one get part and go on the pictures and we must enter it. And that's all. So my suggestion didn't make the list. We had we had several suggestions from city staff that she wanted us to open it to a public, so we did so. And, uh, Hitchcock meets all right. it's, it's a no-brainer, <laughs> but I didn't make the list. Okay, any questions? Mm -hmm. Great project. We're going. Right. Thank you. Um, city budget in eight pages. Mayor has we have a lot of today. Tears and well. We have a question. I don't guess I hear any. So uh, but I have a couple other comments. I wanted to uh, comment on the. Uh, the famous bistro being honored with a award from TripAdvisor. It's uh, and it, they got uh, uh, a huge award, and um, I can't read all this because it's too long. But the famous bistro down there, um, uh, top rated and nationally, so it's a pretty pretty cool deal. Um, and Amanda gave me this. Um, that it might be worth mentioning at today's meeting. It's assume no big activities with uh, COVID activities, I guess, uh, with Hydra Fair and Air Show. There's plenty on everyone's plate. I feel like it would be good for me to reflect on how it has become a huge part of our community and a true community gathering place. On a no, non COVID year, the park sees more than 100 events and gatherings. More than 20 not-for-profit and organizations host community events and fundraisers at the park. No less than 30 free music events on, at the Overlook and Allen Street Pavilion. Nearly 20 school groups and day camps visit each year. Approximately five recognitions or remembrance services annually. And an average of 26 family gatherings and children's birthday parties each year. Without question, the city's Orangeboro's investment to waterfront has been well well used. So thank you for that, Amanda. I appreciate it. Uh, one other question update on the b b b b bridge lights, Mr. Hancock. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, we have a meeting scheduled for Thursday uh, with our vendor, with the contractor, and with the design engineer. And the vendor has assured us, as they did when we designed and purchased the system, that they have um, hundreds of these setups all over the world, for that matter. And uh, they're not experience any, experiencing any issues there. And so I asked them to ensure that we uh, end experi experiencing issues with ours. Uh, the east side has been working pretty effectively the whole time. So obviously that uh, side has been wired or connected, whatever that uh, technical issue may be, uh, is working properly. Uh, and hopefully they can mimic that on the west side as well. So, so have we paid them yet? No. OK, good. Yeah. So uh, what'd you say? That's correct. And so once we get them working right, then we will be trained here to change the lights as we see fit then and won't have to use them. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. Now, the next item that I want to talk about is the proverbial parking issue downtown, the street closures. And I see that Tim's not here today. So, uh, but I think we have to, when we had all the antique cars come by and, and end up on Veterans Boulevard, 125 of them, I was standing there by the convention center where they were the entry, and I can't tell you how many other, of course it was, a, it was an old folks event basically so we could see the old cars, but it, I can't tell you how many people were struggling just to get from our parking garage down there, and, and this older, elder, I'm elderly, a couple of my age or older, you know, Fred asked Martha how much further it is, and I could hear him asking her. She goes, not much further, Fred. And, and uh, he said, I don't think I can make it. So I pulled him off the side and let him lean up against there. We have got to look at, at some point in time, a way to have like a parking place or parking ride, uh, something in our community, let people with disabilities of, of any kind, uh, elderly people, they're not having the opportunity to enjoy our riverfront like normies. That's what we call them in our business, and all the parts of work. Uh, you know, I know there's uh, several, I don't know if uh, the, the uh, church is doing something on that lot during the events. And once you close some streets and then people have to park considerably away, you're going to, you know, I just think we ought to at least look at the chance. You know, I'd even approach. Um, OH and use their old parking garage and have a trolley and run them back and forth. Give them a chance. Give these people one to foster people. I mean, there's a lot of people with some type of mobility issue that can't enjoy our parks when we have events because you can't get there. You got to park, you know, that when we had the Lee Greenwood concert and all of streets were blocked, we parked on the other side of the convention center and had walked to McConnell Plaza. Now, you can do it, and but I think we need to at least have a discussion about how we can move people with mobility issues closer to the events if it amounts to whatever it amounts to. You guys know better than me, but I think Public Works does a great job of manning all those barricades. Every time we close a road, the VFW calls me, and those people that get in there before five, they're, they're kind of trapped. <laughs> you know, they can't get out. You've got parking issues, you know, at the Enclave. There's, a, there's just a, a myriad of, of areas that the people that, the taxpayers that paid for our waterfront, they just can't enjoy it because they can't get there. So I don't know who, and I'll be glad to work with you from a mobility standpoint, uh, but, you know, there's a way we can, to figure out a way to get some folks down there and at least try it. If they don't want to use it, then at least we've made the effort. But I, I don't think we ever considered the fact of somebody on a walker or somebody in a wheelchair, just how difficult sometimes it is to get to where the action is. And if we're going to be a community of all people, I think it's uh, at least worth having the discussion. So uh, I'll be glad to participate. And I can get old people like me to come and tell just exactly how difficult it is to get around. and. And I understand we got to close streets and stuff like that for events, but we've got to figure out a way to try and get people that actually want to come down there that can't get down there just because it's too far to walk. Commissioner you know, Possibility could be a tram of some some sort, you know, something like that. They got killed on the that thing. What's the thing that goes over the ground? Uh, what is it, monorail? Oh, monorail. Yeah, I wanted to take a monorail from. 54 to, to downtown so they could run back and forth 
Yeah, they killed me on that one too. But I just think that we need to at least look at options, maybe that parking lot behind us, or, or there just might be some areas where we could help out and do it on a temporary basis to see for the big event. Like we're getting ready to have a couple of big events, and there are people not going. Mm -mm. Of course, that yeah. planes you can see from, you know, from out there at the way out. But you know, it's just a. It really hit home when this two old came in. He had a walker. He's pushing on. He had to stop, turn around, sit down on it. And Martha's trying to drag him. And Fred's saying, "How much further?" So we can do a better job of that some way. I think. Okay. Commissioner Sample. Uh, Mayor, I think you make a really good point. I think several years ago we were talking about maybe <clears throat> trying something like at the sports center and having a tram come by, picking up people and bringing them downtown every so often. And I think that's a really good idea, I, at least to try it. I even I think, called. Uh, I think you made a great point. The what's that park up there in Indiana? Splash and no. all. Oh, the world, because they got these little trains. Yeah. You pick them all up and drag them in and. So I called over and asked Good them when they, wanted, when they get ready to replace one of those <laughs> trains, you know, I'd be interested in yeah. buying it because, you know, it, it, it's a simple thing, actually, if we just have a place to, for them to congregate is the first thing and then see what we can do about getting them down there. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else before this group? Hearing nothing, I'll uh, adjourn by acclamation. One hour.